there. But as per usual, you know, this world or this life that we get given to us, this kind of precious time we have on this earth, there's always like a little bit of a glimmer, a little bit of a shiny twink at the end of the tunnel. And for us in the UK, it finally got confirmed over Monday or yeah, yesterday as in Monday um, about the final phase of the restrictions being lifted. And I got to be honest, man, this legitimately might be the happiest time or the happiest day um, of this entire time. Maybe the happiest was probably when the first set of restrictions got lifted and people could go outside because there was a brief period where there was a kind of a curfew basically imposed but it wasn't really a stringent curfew what they did in the uk is that they prevented some bars and pubs from opening after a certain time i think it was after 10 p.m which inevitably forced people to go home because it was cold outdoors but um so that was a good time when that kind of got lifted and we allowed to go to parks and stuff that was a really good time because you could feel for once there was a little bit of a um, happiness in the atmosphere people weren't as negative as they were prior but this final confirmation on the 12th was definitely the date that i was most nervous about i think a lot of people in the kind of excitement of things reopening didn't really pay attention to the date of the 12th which is when they were going to get it confirmed because so far in the uk when they um kind of lift the restrictions there's always like a two-week window they kind of announced them two weeks in advance and then the week before the restrictions are meant to be lifted they didn't do another review to make sure that they can go through with it and then you know it kind of gets enacted the following week i'm assuming that week ahead of time is to make sure that they can adjust things in parliament and to give businesses and whatever a chance to you know um amend things again a week isn't enough time but it's better they do a week than they do two days or on the day so they're trying to kind of you know um rewrite that wrong because i think in the early parts of lockdown there was a lot of kind of um drastic u-turns being taken on the day or sometimes a couple of days before the announcement was already made so there is definitely um a good approach in the way they do things now but it's definitely good to see stuff um reopened or on the way to be reopening i can only imagine what people in that sector especially in nightlife and clubs and bars and stuff must be feeling like um there must be a bit of a bittersweet because for sure there's a couple of places that probably haven't been able to survive um especially because of the first set of lockdowns was meant to happen or the first lifting was meant to happen i think on the 23rd or 22nd or something of june so it's been a complete it's been nearly a month since then some places probably haven't been able to hang on but those that have have a chance to somehow you know be able to rectify the situation put money in their pockets you know put smiles on people's faces give people jobs again all that sort of stuff so it's really good to see all around so so it's courtesy of the bbc it says england lockdown rules to end on 19th pm confirms says it means that almost all legal restrictions on social contact will be removed but the prime minister said it was vital to proceed with caution warning its pandemic is not over the peak of the current wave is not expected uh before mid-august and could lead between 1,000 2,000 hospital admissions per day according to government scientists so central estimates from modelers advising the government also show that the covid deaths are expected to be between 100 and 200 per day at the peak although there is a large amount of uncertainty god damn so the numbers don't really correlate to um allowing us to be outdoors if you're completely honest but we're in a position now where there isn't really a good or bad there really there really isn't a great time to reopen things right everything is kind of bad you're basically kind of hoping that it's not as bad as your models kind of tell you but the theory is if we try to wait until september which is what some people in sage are advising because september might be the time where we can effectively or not effectively but we can hypothetically um vaccinate the vast majority of the population it still is not you know covering everybody because you still need to you know make sure that everyone is up for taking it and not everyone is going to take it but for those who are at risk you can cover the majority of them i think up to 80 percent by september but then you know boris raises a good point if it's flu season and we're meant to hit a peak at the end of august begin september there's no guarantee that if we do hold out until then the world will be or the country itself will be in a better place for us to basically go out as per normal so you're kind of hoping this head start is going to do something i don't know what it's going to do i don't know what the real thinking behind it again no policy maker don't really give a shit want to just be outdoors but it does kind of make you think this doesn't really make any sense really if you think about it but again the desire to go outdoors makes you want to suspend your logical mind and you're not really thinking about had it too much i'm sure people are doing it but if the numbers keep going up and again forget what you know some people are like, oh, it's about deaths not cases it's about deaths not okay cool but numbers of deaths are still going up they haven't gone down we're not in like low double digits in deaths we're still quite high um 
you know, of, of course, cases are, you know, expounding. There's stories of people who have vaccines getting the COVID still. There's all these anomalies that are popping up. So there is no clear running a runway for us to approach. But maybe this is the best possible scenario, all things considered. The article continues. It says earlier, the health secretary told the House of Commons cases could reach up to 100,000 a day later in the summer. But he did not believe that this would put the unsusta unsustainable pressure on NHS. He said vaccinations had created a positive wall, sorry, a protective wall, which would mean it could um, withstand a summer wave, says Sajiv Javid. Um, Boris Johnson later told Downing Street press conference that obvious, uh, sorry, that coronavirus continues to carry risk for you and your family. We simply cannot revert instantly from Monday, July to it as life as it was before COVID. The Prime Minister added that he hoped that the roadmap will be irreversible, but in order to have that, it's also got to be cautious approach. So the irreversible rhetoric has kind of disappeared, which is sensible. I think prior, Boris was like, oh, it's irreversible. We can't, if we open up, we're not going to go backwards. But but unfortunately, like, you know, we wanted, it's one thing, it's kind of weird, isn't it, right? They're a conservative government, but they're quite populist in how they go about things, right? They sort of kind of wait to see what the public sentiment is before they make a decision. So it's no surprise that he's not really kind of pinning his flag or putting his, you know, stamping his foot down and saying, this is the date, we're going to go with this and we're not going back. He's sort of kind of covering all these bases, opening up despite the numbers being, you know, a little bit concerning. Also basically telling us to, advising us to still wear a mask and when we go outdoors, saying it's not reversible, saying that it's a cautious approach, saying that they're going to reintroduce the lockdowns again if the numbers kind of go the other way. He's done that thing that you're not meant to do when you gamble, where you basically put your money on literally everything Everybody, which makes it which ends up making you no money you have to kind of put your money on someone right at least one person maybe a minimum of two um but you know what can you do going forward the savage javid thing is good it's, it's funny though and ever since he's taken over from what's his face hancock it's been a pretty easy run up for a minute because essentially all you have to do is just be a little bit more steadfast in your ideals that things should be reopened and life should go back to normal and people are generally going to think you're better than the other guy right politics is weird like that isn't it you just have so much time to collect data and to find out where the other person's gone wrong and the moment you step into their shoes you just do the opposite of what they've done or you do a little bit more of what they did that people liked that they didn't kind of top kind of double down on and then suddenly you've kind of won loads of fans but anyway it continues while virtually all restrictions will be lifted some guidance will remain for example the legal requirement to wear face coverings in some enclosed spaces will be removed but javid said that they were still expected and recommended in crowded indoor areas Nightclubs will also be allowed to reopen for the first time since March 2020. So it's been effectively a year. It feels longer. So it's not been that long. It's been a year and a couple of months, but it feels much longer than that. I don't know why specifically, but it might have to do with the play graves because we've seen other people being outdoors and celebrating and dancing around when they probably shouldn't. It's probably made us feel like there's been a lot more going on than it has, but in the grand scheme of things, not really. There was that brief period in time last summer when Berlin had some events, Switzerland was doing a couple, Austria doing a couple, obviously parts of um, Eastern Europe or Central Europe um, were doing a couple too. But for the most part, everyone's kind of been locked down. Of course, you know, America's sort of on its own little tangent over there. It continues to say there'll no longer be limits on how many people can meet and the one meter plus distancing rule will be removed. So there's going to be people absolutely grinding up your ass in supermarkets now. The, the days of like, I, I quite enjoyed that. Maybe I was in the minority, but I enjoyed the fact that people gave you space in places where usually people don't respect your personal space. Right? It's quite nice to have that. Um, so be prepared for, you know, a bunch of people standing right beside you as you go and kind of pick up your avocados. It continues, but nightclubs and other venues with large crowds, so-called domestic vaccine passports as a matter of social responsibility, the Prime Minister said. Yeah, about that. Don't think a lot of people are going to do that. I think a lot of clubs, especially, are probably veering on the eyes on the side of personal responsibility. They're veering on the lives. Of, they're veering on the side of liberty, freedom, and all that stuff. And I think after preventing these places from opening for the best part of a year, it really feels um, somewhat. It really feels somewhat kind of, I don't know, there is something quite disrespectful about demanding these places to then try to enforce a vaccination passport certificate system for entry, right? Um, I've, I've come to the conclusion or I've kind of argued for the longest time that I think a lot of people will be in for 
quite a rude awakening in terms of the numbers of people that are going to go out clubbing in the UK. I think the polls recently where people basically voted and said, oh, we don't want clubs to reopen. You think they're menaced the society with COVID rampant. There is, it feels like there's a collective sort of changing in consciousness when it comes to nightclubs and all that sort of stuff. I think because it was kind of seen as the enemy of progress, right? All these people going out and doing play graves, illegal raves. I don't know. People kind of have changed their stance on it. So it wouldn't surprise me if a lot of the places that are meant to be opening will be a lot emptier than people actually assume they would be. And if that's the case, these clubs will need every single punter that they can to walk in. You know, they, they're not in the business of being able to turn away um, patrons, um, especially after being, again, without business for a year. So to demand that from places is really unfair. But I think it's nothing to worry about because I don't think a lot of places will enforce it. This says continues. This would allow people to show that they are double jabbed, have a negative test result, or have the natural immunity after recovering from COVID using an NHS app. In guidance published after the press conference, the government said it was revert it would reserve the right to make the certification mandatory in certain venues if necessary in the future. That's completely fine. It makes complete sense. No one's going to abide by it. Though it continues, government guidance to work from home where possible will be lifted, but the ministers are encouraging a gradual return to the workplace. Mr. Javid also said people should act with personal responsibility and try to meet people outside. For sure if you're working in a place where you're meant to be working where you've been working from home now enjoy the last few weeks or a couple of weeks of freedom because more than likely than not i think a lot of places unless you're like a really progressive forward-thinking startup are going to demand stuff to go back into the office i just think people have had enough of being i think it's twofold people have had enough of being at home in general i think by and large even whether it's kind of you know people in the uh, management or people just working as employees i think they definitely want to be back within their staff or sit in their kind of office with fellow colleagues and having a chat with the cover machine people miss all that sort of stuff that work gossip stuff it doesn't really bang the same way through slack and whatnot or microsoft teams so definitely there's going to be a research on people coming back there but i just think in general for the kind of economy to bounce back there needs to be people commuting back and forth to metropolitan city areas to go work in we works and other co-working spaces because if not you know i don't know how the economy is going to bounce back like those people popping into prayer in the morning or starbucks or costas or eat they are responsible for a lot of people's jobs they're responsible for a lot of money kind of passing hands in and around that area so for sure there's going to be a somewhat i would say there's going to be some very interesting outside influences putting pressure on people who own companies or buildings or whatever it may be to put pressure on ministers to then get people to go back into your office for sure so definitely enjoy your bits of freedom now but don't think it's going to last forever and if it can last forever or the only way it should be last forever is if you somehow negotiate into your contract if not then don't expect it to go on for a long time um, unless you're working in a place like Facebook or what some other you know forward thinking tech startup place uh, Mr. Javid also said people should they said the requirements of self isolate if you have contacted um, contacted by NHS stress and test and trace will remain in place until august 16th when it'll be relaxed if someone tests positive for virus they'll, they'll still be legally required to self-isolate while well, due to review its restriction on the 15th of july while scotland expected to move to zero on the 19th um of course um lift legal most legal limits by 9th of august and northern Ireland is due to ease on the 26th so we're quite we're going quite gung-ho we're the um, we're, we're kind of putting our foot to the metal everyone else looks like they're kind of being a little bit more cautious especially scotland they're really really taking their sweet ass time to reopen things the nhs test and trace app i'm assuming a lot of people once the world reopens are probably going to end up deleting it um the ordinance we have here to wear masks in enclosed areas i think is still a good idea i think that one of the best things to come out of covid is the norm is a normalization of people wearing face masks right there was a period in time where you'd go to an airport or some kind of you know busy metropolitan area and you see people from asian countries wearing face marks and generally they were kind of met with i wouldn't say derision but some sort of confusion you didn't really get what these guys were doing like do they know something that we don't it just would you know it just kind of weirdly upset you discombobulate you kind of throw you off but obviously now with covid people are a lot more welcoming and open to it so seeing somebody with masks doesn't necessarily you know don't bat an eyelid at all and i think if anything going forward in terms of being on public transport and being on planes and stuff especially in the uk because our public transport is terrible there is no air conditioning so if there's a way to kind of minimize the amount of gunk that you're inhaling into your respiratory system then the better but i think definitely for planes and stuff and just generally as a courtesy because i think you know that's something that we kind of missed in the confusion of wearing a face mask during covid was the mask was less so a kind of 
prevention and a cure for making sure you don't get the virus and more so a kind of weird meta signaling thing that we were kind of all in this together and you know if i wear one you wear one then hopefully it will limit the spread you know it kind of had some um signaling uh, messages or kind of messaging tied into it right so i'm assuming i would hope going forward people who are ill who decide you know those kind of those psychos who have fevers before they go on holiday or who are openly sneezing with their mouth open without covering their mouth or anything will hopefully decide to put donna mask on if they're not feeling well and not put their other you know um there are other kind of people on the plane at risk from you know catching a cold or anything unnecessarily especially at work at work i understand it because there is this weird especially in the uk people seem to have a real big hang up on calling in sick they feel as if they're like you know might get fired or whatever it may be or sometimes a boss tells you without telling you that if you do call in too many times sick that you're going to be in jeopardy of losing your job so people tend to kind of be a little bit um a little bit careless with their sickness and kind of coming coughing sneezing and shit so hopefully that will continue and people will just end up being like you know what i've got i'm sick i'm gonna put this mask on um everyone else back away and protect yourself so definitely looking forward to stuff like that changing going forward but i'm just happy to see it finally come to an end on the 19th and we can come back to some semblance of normality i beg you i bloody bloody beg